Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the third webinar in the series conducted by English Language Teaching Institute of Symbiosis, Pune. Vocabulary is crucial to language development and communication skills. After all, without adequate words, it's difficult to express thoughts, ideas, and feelings. I, Kalyani Abde, faculty at ELTIS, welcome all of you to this webinar, Boost Your Word Power. Let me introduce you to the presenter of this webinar, Dr. Dharmendra Shet. He is an engineer turned teacher, teacher, teacher trainer, and a corporate trainer with more than two decades of experience. Dr. Shet has an MA, a PhD, and a PSOL certificate from Wisconsin University, USA. He has prepared learners for tests such as IELTS, TOEFL, and PTE. During his tenure as a National Vice President, English Language Teachers Association of India, he was instrumental in strengthening networks of ELT professionals in India. We welcome you, sir. We will have a Q&A session after the presentation. Now, I request Dr. Shade to guide all of us to strengthen our word power. Thank you, Kalyani. It's always a pleasure to be at LTS, either physically or virtually. Kalyani, uh, just let me know whenever there is any technical problem in audio or video. Sure, sir. Yeah. Shall I present my screen? Yes, sir. It's nice to see quite a few familiar faces in the, in the audience. Some close friends, some well-wishers, some mentors. Can you please confirm whether you are able to see the slide? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. We can see it. Yeah. So you will have to keep giving me signals at regular intervals because I am not able to see participants now. So let me begin by thanking Altis for inviting me to talk on vocabulary development. And as usual, I'll begin by invoking blessings of my gurus, Dr. Sudhakar Marathe and Mrs. Marathe. They are in Pune right now. Here, we we for us mammalian bipeds. I have an earnest craving that our pre-prandial confabulation doesn't metamorphose into an acrimonious wrangle a rancorous altercation, and a raucous ideological burning. Have you understood? Well, if this is the kind of English vocabulary that you want to acquire, we might call it Shashi Tharurian vocabulary, then you are at the wrong place. Because we are not okay going to discuss such vocabulary. What we are going to discuss is like this. Dear friends, I hope our discussion this morning doesn't end up in a bitter dispute. Have you understood now? Yes. Thank you, yeah. sir. <laughs> I'm sure my students will enjoy this. Yes. Okay. So, as I said, my objective is very clear. Basically, today I'll be talking with students and all the teachers and all the other members of the faculty at LTS. They are on my side. They will help me whenever I fumble. And we are lucky to have a, quite a few senior people in the audience. And I'm sure some of my friends are watching this live on Facebook. So I need help of all the friends and mentors. But I'll be addressing students mainly. 
So, dear students, my objective today is to probably teach you a few new ways of increasing your word power. Or if you already know that particular method, then probably my discussion will solidify what you already know. Now, before we actually begin, let me make it clear that the duration is 300 hours. One hour will be now and 299 hours will be your self-study. Then only you can acquire a good amount of vocabulary. So if you expect to increase your word power by just this particular webinar, then I think you are mistaken. The question policy, I think it has been made clear that you can write questions in your chat box or if you're on Facebook, you can write in your uh, comment box and somebody at the end will help me because I am not able to see either Facebook or even Google Meet right now. So somebody from LT's team will definitely tell me the questions and I will answer them at the end if possible. But let me also make it clear at the beginning that I am not going to answer three types of questions. I'm sure you know about that. Your teachers might have already told you that three types of questions we are not supposed to ask anyone. To friends, colleagues, teachers, don't ask these three questions. One, what is the spelling of XYZ word? Because as you know, English is not a phonetic language. What is spoken and what is written, there is a world of difference. So sometimes you begin a word with a sound O and the spelling may have E, like on we. So it is impossible to guess the spelling of any word. So it is better to look up in a dictionary on your own. So don't ask spellings. Number two, don't ask meanings to anyone. Because in English, sometimes there is a lot of illogical pattern of meaning. So you probably uh, apply your logic, but then the logic doesn't work here. For example, active. And if you add in before that, it becomes inactive. So they are opposites but valuable, and if you add in before that invaluable, they remain the same. So logic doesn't work here. And the third question, which you are not supposed to ask anyone, is pronunciation. So three things, spelling, meaning, and pronunciation. These three things you are not supposed to ask anyone. Whenever you have a doubt, you can look up in a good dictionary authentic dictionary. We'll talk about that later. Material. Now these days when thousands of things are available with a click, I don't think material is a problem. However, if you have any particular requirement, then you can send me a WhatsApp or email later and I'll try to see how I can help. All the contact details are given at the bottom of the slide. So what are the contents for today's webinar? I'm going to talk about some of my premises. A premise is a strong belief, something that you will not change easily unless you have a very strong convincing opposite views. So I'll share with you some of my personal premises in terms of vocabulary study. We'll talk about some of the processes then some problems, and then at the end, question answers, as I said. So let me begin with my premises. As you know, variety is the spice of life. In the same way, vocabulary is the spice of language. 
words in isolation do not have fixed meanings. You take any word for that matter. If somebody asks me, what is the meaning of X, Y, Z word? Then my answer, as my teachers have always taught me, my answer is always where. Because a word acquires meaning in a communication event because of the context and the co-text. Context is the situation in which that word appears and co-text is the words before and after that particular word. You take any random word, for example, point, the word point, and think about various meanings of the word point. I may have a decimal point in mind, and you may think about that's a good point. Somebody might be thinking about point and shoot camera. Somebody might be thinking about point a finger at somebody. So the word point doesn't have any meaning as such. It has meaning potential. That means it can mean this or that or that depending on the context and the co-text. The third premise is we can never do enough to improve our vocabulary. I'm sure all the teachers today uh, who are attending this session, they will agree with me that almost every day, in spite of having 10 years, 20 years of experience, you will invariably come across either new words or some old words with new meanings or new shades of meaning. It's a continuous process. You can never say, I have mastered all the words. Now I don't need to work on vocabulary. A very important premise is, it is not enough to know or study words in isolation as an independent unit. For example, if you know the word honest, he's an honest merchant. You know that word honest. But suppose while speaking or writing, you begin your sentence like this. I was impressed by his and then blank. Now here, you can't use honest. You know the word, but in you don't know it in totality. So you will not be able to complete that sentence. So you have to rephrase the sentence or maybe you have to leave it as it is for others to fill in. So honest is an adjective and Honesty is the noun form. You require that. So for any word, knowing a word alone is not enough. Always try to find out all the words based on that particular word. Another example, say compete. You know the word compete. But sometimes in your language, you require competition. Sometimes you require competitive. Sometimes you require uncompetitive. Sometimes you require competitively. So you don't know how you will need that particular word. What part of speech will you require? What form of word will you require? So it is important to study word families. We are going to talk about that a little later in detail. Now, many surveys across the globe have confirmed that one's success is closely related to one's command of vocabulary and language skills. And as you know, vocabulary plays a crucial role in language study. The sixth point is especially for learners in probably Gujarat and Maharashtra. Many teachers and learners do not pay attention to the pronunciation aspect of vocabulary. Now, let me make it clear that vocabulary study in isolation is not really going to help you. You will have to study vocabulary along with other skills and aspects. So listening, speaking, reading, writing, and pronunciation. All these, when they are together, 
then you will be able to use vocabulary to this. Right? So pronunciation is an important part of your word power. Otherwise, you might be able to recognize that word when somebody speaks or when you read that word. But if you are not able to pronounce that word, you will never be able to use that in your real life situations in speaking. So pay attention to pronunciation whenever you study any new word. And I'm sure most teachers are familiar with this, whether it is for vocabulary or even sentence structures. We focus on three things, form, meaning, and use. We are going to discuss these also in detail later. And the last premise, friends, learning is not enough. That doesn't end your study. So learn some new words, record them, record in the sense either in writing or in speaking, record them, revise them, and finally, use them in your language. Then only you will master that particular word or word family. So with these premises, let me go ahead. In one of my recent uh, webinars, I have talked in de detail about three keys. So today I will just touch them and then we'll go ahead. So there are three keys. WWW. It is not our World Wide Web, so don't think about any website. Today I'm going to give you three keys which if you use in your vocabulary study, I'm sure your vocabulary will multiply like anything. And I'll give you examples also today. And today I'm going to give you different examples from what I used in my last webinar. So some of you who attended my last webinar don't worry, today we will have new examples. The first key is look at the world. Now you might say what's new in that? I have always looked at the world. But I'll tell you, I'll, with examples I'll show you how to look at the world for vocabulary. The second is word. Look at the word. Now you might say without looking at the word, how do I read? I always look at the word. But I'll show you some other ways of looking at them. And the third is look at the well. Right? So let's take these three one by one. Now, your time starts. You have to take active part in this particular webinar. So here I have shown you a very familiar object. You have seen, I'm sure everyone has seen that. Now I want you to write in the chat box or if you're on Facebook, in comment box, whatever parts are indicated using arrows. I have not given numbers, so you can just write randomly, whatever parts you know. But via this activity, I'm sure you have realized. Yes, friends, stop uh, writing your answers. No worries. You are not supposed to write all the words and you are not supposed to know all the words also right now because this is a kind of unplanned test for you so don't worry so the point is even an ordinary day-to-day -day life object like this has so many parts right so let me show you the answers first and then we'll discuss Yeah. Right? Okay, so here this particular object is not important. The point is when we look at the world, any object, anything in nature, for example, let's train our brain to think about words for different parts. And you don't know what word will help you in what context. I'm sure you know that words from one field, they go to the other field. For example, magnetism. I know you uh, have heard that word in science, but don't you use it in day-to-day -day life language? For example, 
Dr. Zedan Patil has magnetic personality. So when you say magnetic, that word is in science, but you are using in your common language. Right? So words, English words, they can be used in any field. So it is better to study words even from objects in objects in nature or in your day-to-day -day life situation. Right? Let me take another example. In this rainy season, what do you generally see in the sky? In fact, in India we see that for six months, eight months, maybe. I'm sure you'll see something like this. Right? Now, normally people say clouds, right? But you know that there are different types of clouds. Now, if you don't know words for different types of cloud, your answer will be the same clouds. But suppose somebody has told you that these are the four basic types of clouds. Cumulus clouds, for example, one on the other. Like in children's literature, you often find cumulus clouds. Now, accumulate means put together. You know that word, accumulate. Right? Cumulative, for example, like those who have studied statistics and accountancy, they might know cumulative. So, the basic word, accumulate from that cumulus clouds. Then cirrus clouds, which are very far in the distance, feathery, light, soft, sponge kind of clouds. The nimbus, dark, gray, heavy, they often bring rain, right? And stratus is the lowest level clouds, right? So next time when you see a cloud, I'm sure you will try to identify whether the cloud is cumulus, cirrus, nimbus, or stratus. So looking at, when I say look at the, the world, this is what I mean by that. Let's go one step further. And by the way, you don't have to write anything or you don't have to, you know, uh, struggle to understand because I'm going to share this presentation late, later with at this team. So from there you can take it. Now, since we have studied how to look at the world, let's play a small quiz. It's a very quick quiz in which I'm going to show you some pictures. And there will be an arrow indicating something, some part of that picture. And you have to write down in the chat box if you want the answer so that everyone can see that. Is that clear? Yes, sir. And Kalyani, you can speak the answers when people have written. Have written. Yes. Yeah. I'll give you some time yes. to think. We'll take answers at the end. Don't speak now. Participants, okay. I'm sure you've seen this. You can write down the answer in the chat box. If there is somebody around you, you can talk to that person also, no worries. Cheating is allowed here, you can use network also if you have another phone. Use any source, but find out. Good. Okay, second picture. I'll give you answers at the end, don't worry. I'm sure everyone has seen this particular uh, person who helps us, a social worker. During my childhood, I used to use a sharpener to sharpen my pencils but mainly for the pattern that was created on those the bank. Now don't write a belt. 
is because I want that particular object that I am indicating, that part of the belt. Okay. Yeah, students are sending a lot of answers, sir. Yeah, good, good. I'm impressed. If you go by road on a highway, I'm sure you will see this on tops of many factories, especially chemical factories. Now, don't write a candle here. I want you to look at the arrow carefully. Okay, now I think since we are running short of time, I will directly go to the answers. I will not ask you to speak, but those, if your answer is correct, you can pat yourself. And if your answer is not correct or if you have not written, you can slap yourself gently. Okay, guys. Okay, now let's check the answers. The first is a cowrie shell. If your answer is correct, you can pet yourself. If it is not correct, if you have not written, you can gently slap yourself. And don't tell me that you have not this, you have not seen this particular thing. Everyone has seen, I'm sure. If not the real object, you have seen it in pictures. And as a child, I am sure most people like me have played using this. A rake. It's a garden tool. So many got this right. Yeah. Good. The third is anvil. Anvil is also used to, in shaping a hot metallic object. On anvil, we put that hot parts metallic object and then we hammer it and we give a particular shape. And a similar thing is used by cobblers here, anvil. By the way, all these pictures Some are cobbler actually. Yeah, so I wanted to, I wanted them to look at the, the arrows. Yeah. Shavings. Shavings. Now here pronunciation is important. I'm not talking about savings that you have in a bank. Here we have shavings. Teachers in uh, primary classes, yeah, they need this word again and again. Any pointed part in many objects actually. I have used here a belt because that is more likely to be used by young students these days. But otherwise in many other objects also you have a pointed part at the end of a tool or cloth. So that is called a crown. Okay. As I mentioned on many tops of many facts, chemical companies. Uh, just one oh, answer. Hmm? Yeah, just one answer. A, a, a person has written. Okay. A person has written hook uh, for the belt thing. No, I yeah. would strongly recommend uh, that particular person to have a look at uh, or go to Google, ask Uncle Google, parts of a belt, and you will come to know there are more than 10 parts of the belt. A windsock on the top of a chemical factory. This will help people to know
know in case there is an emergency in what direction to run. So a wind sock gives the wind direction so people can run perpendicular to this particular wind sock. Neither in the direction of wind nor opposite but perpendicular. Okay. And finally, this again pronunciation is so important here. It's a wick, not week. Now again, week will have two meanings. For the whole week, he was weak. That's another thing. But here we are interested in a wick. A wick is a piece of string in the center of a candle or a similar part of a light that supplies fuel to a flame. You can see that arrow, right? So this is what I mean by looking at the word. What's your score? Never mind, it's not important. Another. Are you ready? Second key is look at the word. Now there is nothing new here. Everyone will say I look at words every day. But I'll show you how to look at the word. Now let's look at this particular word, apposition. Now, if I ask you to break that word and divide it into two parts, where will you break it? In a live class, I can ask participants, but here I cannot. So I'll just answer. I'm sure you will break it in two parts, pre and position, because you know the word pre, you've seen that pre-primary, right? Preliminary, you know that pre is something which is before, right? And position, you already know the meaning of position. So now in this word, when you look at it carefully, you are able to identify two commonly used either words or parts of words. So pre and position, when they are together, it becomes preposition. Now in English grammar, why do they call those small words in, on, for, from, after, before? Why do they call them preposition? Because their position is before the noun that is related to that. For example, on the table. So when you say on the table, on comes first, not the on table or not the table on. On is a preposition and its position is at the beginning of that phrase, right? In your mother tongue, just for uh, interest sake, you can try to translate it and see in your mother tongue whether it is at the beginning or at the end of that phrase. You can try it in your own way. Please try to translate it in your mother tongue and see where the meanings of those prepositions are at the beginning of the phrase or at the end of the phrase. It is impossible that this particular meaning of your preposition will be somewhere in the middle of the phrase. It is not possible. It has to be either at the beginning or at the end. For example, let me take Hindi because most participants are likely to be familiar with Hindi. So on the table, table ke upar. So upar will be at the end of the phrase, right? I'm sure the same thing happens in Marathi and Gujarati as well. In most Indian languages, actually this will happen except Sanskrit. Because in Sanskrit, there is no fixed word order. Yes, sir. Aham solpam sanskutam janami, janami solpam aham sanskutam, aham janami sanskutam solpam, they all convey the same meaning. But in other Indian languages and in English, word order is important. So the way we have looked at the word preposition, now let's try to look at some other words. Now this I used last time, so I will not spend a lot of time on this word. Spectacles, 
this particular word has the root spec and from spec in spec uh, in the in latin language spec means to see so from that hundreds of words are made in english so if you know the meaning of spec you will be able to understand meanings of so many words and all these words are related to see spectacles you use them to see clearly suspect you doubt somebody <laughs> respect re means again and again for example if i look at my uh, guru's pictures again and again that means respect that person introspect intro is within so you look within retrospect past spectrum factor circumspect aspect and the list doesn't end here if you go to watch a cricket match and you are a spectator even when you when somebody comes to elites i'm sure you give you give a prospectus containing all the details so these are just some of the words based on spec i'm sure there are many more but the point is try to understand the roots of words and i'm going to show you later on a book in which only 14 words 14 how many 1 4 14 words are discussed in detail and how many words are learned at the end of the book 14000 so if you study just 14 words carefully 14 and how many words will you understand 14000 words i'll show that book later or maybe now because i might forget let me show that book now this is a book can you all see this book yes sir programmed vocabulary yes it's a very old book actually uh, 20 25 years ago probably it was published and here in this book they have used only 14 words and taught them the way i talked about spectacles and at the end of the book you have mastered 14000 words so now you understand the power of the technique of looking at the word carefully with teachers let's another common root fort again a latin root to carry from one place to the other like that carry on the sea shore you have a port mumbai is a port surat is a port i'm sure you know that There are many ports in India. Now, whatever comes in is import, right? Now, this is your time, your chance. You write down words <clears throat> that you know containing the root port. In your chat box, you can write down words that you know. Not all the words containing port will have meaning based on that, but just try. Only words to you. Know. Alani, whenever somebody writes the word, you can speak that word for others. Yes, por portable. Very good. Yes, sir. Portfolio, portrait, oh, airport, export. Excellent. Excellent. portion mm -hmm. if you want to go to report to, go to a foreign country where will you go to catch a flight deport yes passport yeah, you will have a you need a passport and then you will with the passport where will you go to catch a flight transport support portland export Airport, okay. yeah. Outport. Okay. Fine, yeah, friends. So stop writing. The point is clear now. That when you look at the word, I'm sure you will be able to find some common roots of words. Even if you don't know whether that root is Greek or Latin or some other language, it doesn't matter. As far as the use is concerned, you should know what other words are based on that. So just some more, more examples. Whenever you see 
VIT for VIV in any word, it is possible. It's not always true, but it is possible that the meaning is related to life or the verb live. So vitamin, you already know, right? It is related to life, energy, viviparous. Have you heard that word, viviparous? In fact, I used that at the beginning of our session when I talked about viviparous mammalian bipeds. So I was talking about human beings. Vital, vivacious, vivid. Sometimes some people when they write or speak and describe something, their description is vivid. Life, real life. You see that in your mind. Right? Let's take another route. When you see CED or seed or C double E or says, the meaning is likely to be go or yield. Right? You accept somebody's authority, that is yield. So in this list, I'm sure you'll see many, many, many common words. Right? For example, can you see my cursor? Yes, sir. Proceed. So when I say proceed, now pro means further ahead. Right? And seed means to go. So go ahead, proceed. Now you can also understand the meaning of succeed. Go ahead. You are successful. And if you look at me, can you look at me? So my hairline is receding. Reem is going back. Right? Reem means again back. So it's going back, receding hairline. Right? So already know the word excess. X more than or beyond. Right? So now you see the importance of rules. Let's take one more. Grad or grace, that is a step. Right? There is an interesting word here. Take gradual. So step by step. There will be a gradual improvement in your vocabulary. Or your vocabulary will gradually improve. Step by step. You already know the word graduate, but in India we have a serious problem in the use of the word graduation. Many people say I do graduation or I have done graduation or I have finished graduation or I completed graduation. All these are wrong. Why? Because the word graduation does not update, does not go with finish or complete or do. So in that situation, you have to use the word Graduate as a verb. I graduated from XYZ University in 2005. And the word graduation is used when there is a ceremony, when degrees are awarded to students. And another meaning of graduation, now you understand that grad means step, right? So the word graduation is used in chemical laboratories, for example, where there is a where there is some kind of uh, vessel in which they keep some liquid, so 5 ml, 10 ml, 15 ml. So these are called graduations. Even on a thermometer, when you measure your temperature, there are scales, so they are called graduations, a graduated class, right? Now, I'm sure you understand the meaning of regress. So grace means a step or go, and re means behind. So you are going back. Some policies may be regressive. Right? Sometimes by teaching, I digress to go from one direction to the other. And let's take the last route. Because we are talking about vocabulary, I thought let me take this route, V-O-C or V-O-K. So the primary underlying meaning is 
voice or call. Now you see all these words are directly or indirectly connected with speaking. Right? Occasional evocation, vocalist. Irrevocable. This is a very useful technical word. Irrevocable means something that is passed, some law that is passed, we cannot take it back. Irrevocable. Some changes are irrevocable changes. Right? So, it for negative or opposite, and vocal is about sound. Right? And sorry, this is the last word. Last root, pro. Pro means forward. Or another meaning is for. Like pro business, pro student policies, pro democracy. And another is pro means forward, progress. So when you progress, you go forward. I'm sure you have seen a procession, right? a group of people going in a particular direction. There are many religious or political processions. Okay. The last point, an important point, the last key is look at the well. So look at the well. What do I mean by that? I have hinted about that at the beginning when I talked about the word point. Now let's take a very common word, mark. Now see how different shades of meaning this particular word can have. The commonest underlying meaning is a mark. You can see on the face of this person, on the forehead of that person. See that mark on his forehead here. Can you see? If you are using a mobile, probably it will be a little difficult to see. But you can think about any person with a forehead and on the forehead sometimes they have a mark or sometimes religious purposes or sometimes fat. So mark. Then the temperature will cross the 45 degree mark soon. So here mark means a level. Then students are I am sure familiar with pass mark. What is the pass mark for the test? It may be 60, 70. And he gave me top marks for my effort. For example, Dr. Patil may give me top marks at the end of this webinar, right? For my effort. So give top marks means to praise somebody. I'm sure you will make your mark soon. All the students at LTS, I'm sure they will make their mark soon. They'll be successful in their field. And your guess, suppose I ask you a question and you answer, but your answer is wrong, very wrong actually. So your guess is wide off the mark. Now here remember there are no O double F, no two uh, F letters, it is only one O. So wide off the mark. And when you say way off the mark, so there it is off, double F. Right? And when you buy something or when somebody does something, you can say, well, it's not up to the mark. You need to work hard. You need to improve. Right? And there is always uh, some self-study on the at the bottom. He will fail. Mark my words. Now I can say at the end of this webinar, I'm sure your vocabulary will improve significantly. Mark my words. That's another use of mark. Now that's not enough. We have another. Great, you have marked. That means you have achieved your goal. Our ad campaign has hit the mark or missed the mark. He is not disturbed. As, that is not disturbed. It is a mark of a true leader. It is a sign. I am sure you can see there is a lot of overlap between meanings. We have reached the halfway mark. Right? At the, in the, we are in the middle of something. His novel bears the mark of his struggle abroad. This indicates. And this marks the end of or a turning point in his career. Tony Mark 
get set and go. That's another. Now you might ask me, where do I get such material, such simplified material, where important, commonly used words are given with different shades of meaning and with example sentences? Don't worry. You can go to our website, learnlingua.com. There is a section called free material, and in that you can go to pictures. And there are, I think, more than 200 words, commonly used words. You know, let me make it very clear now at this juncture that vocabulary development does not always mean learning new words. You can also learn new shades of meanings of already known words, partially known words. You take any common word, say right. For example, if I say right, what is the meaning of right? Now you can't say, because I may be talking about right and left. I may be talking about right and wrong. I may be talking about human rights. So the word right can have multiple shades of meaning. Right? So when I'm asking right, so I'm asking you whether it, is it okay? So words have different shades of meaning. So that you can get from our website. No email, no phone number, nothing. You just have to directly go to the website www.fluentkingwa.com and go to free material section and there in pictures you'll find more than 200. I have spent, me, not just me actually, my entire team at Fluent Lingua and me, we have spent about three years time to produce this material. So use that material and increase your work on. Now, somebody may ask, why work so hard? Okay, so does the large vocabulary help? If your answer is yes, then how? Now, because you don't have time, I'm just giving you the answers. With a large vocabulary, you can see more, hear more, read more, think more, understand more, express more, and live more. Well, I'm not sure, but live better? Absolutely. Okay, fine. Thank you very much, Altis. And now I think I will stop this presentation. Out of 300 hours, one hour work is over. The remaining 299 is up to you. So thank you very much. I will stop presenting now. Uh, yes, I have a question. Yes, please. So, would you like to tell me how is vocabulary linked to reading comprehension? Now, I'm sure you know the answer to this question because without knowing the word, without knowing the meaning of the word, it is useless. For example, at the beginning, when I said, Dear Viviparas Mammalian Bibles, now that was just for fun. Imagine. Somebody uses a word like that. And if you don't know the word, then there'll be two problems. And if you're not able to uh, understand from the context or context, then there are two problems. One, obviously you will miss the, the entire message. And second, it will be demotivating for you. You know, many people, and let me share a very interesting example. Some student came to me, he said, I am, I can't read, I feel it boring. So I said, what have you read so far? Let's just let me know about that. So he said, I read this novel, that novel, and one of them was Pride and Prejudice. Now he was an intermediate level learner. So somebody recommended read Pride and Prejudice. It is very good for vocabulary development. And he started, and after two, three paragraphs, he accepted defeat, he admitted his defeat. Now that is not the right book for him. Right? Because there are so many difficult words for him. So it is demotivating for him. So he's stopped reading, obviously. So you're reading, if you want to use reading as a, as a tool to improve your overall command of English, then obviously you require a lot of words at your command. So you enjoy the process. Right? Any other question, please? Your sound isn't clear. Yes. Which vocabulary words should the 
teachers teach students directly okay now uh, some of you who attended my previous session hello previous can you hear me yeah I hello uh, sir can you hear me yes yes can i answer the question that you asked Smriti, yeah. can you hear me? Yeah, now it's clear, Kalyani. Yeah. So the question was, uh, what works to teach students, right? Now, those who are from some ELT background, English language teaching background, they yes. might already yes. know yes. that yes, sir, please. there is a list called Michael West's general uh, service list, a list of words, about 2,500, 700, right? So those are commonly used words, high frequency words. Right? Now, today, if you cannot get that list, no worries. Most authentic dictionaries, they give you a list of words called defining vocabulary. Now, these are the words that people use, that all these dictionary makers use to write definitions of other words. That means if you know these 3,000 words, you are likely to be comfortable in your normal day-to-day -day life situation. And as I said, not just words alone, but word families. Next question, please. Uh, sir, uh, okay. can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, please. Uh, so, sir, so, uh, the like us, uh, usually we face a problem so, that, that we cannot uh, use... one that we can take? Uh, yes. Uh, we cannot uh, use the words... So, can you uh, tell me it? what is the difference between receptive vocabulary Pritish was, and... was speaking something. Uh, yeah, Prithish this said. So I was asking, yes, uh, sorry to interrupt you, ma'am. I was asking that uh, even though we have a good vocabulary, but we are not sure how to utilize those words or those paraphrases in day to day communication. That is why those words get redundant, or uh, we may say that it becomes passive words for Pritish, us. Yeah, please. Yes, Prithish. Yeah, I have listened to Prithish's question, and I think another question somebody was asking is also about. The same thing receptive vocabulary and productive vocabulary right now we all know that we are able to recognize thousands of words right but we are not able to use these words in our day-to-day -day life so the to use is limited it's for everyone for example i know 15,000 words i will not use i will not be able to use them probably i will be able to use hardly 5,000 words so our task is to convert those receptive vocabulary words into productive vocabulary. And for that, uh, there are multiple things that we can do. In fact, we can have another session for how to do that, convert from productive to, uh, from receptive to productive. So the point is, the more you flood yourself with language in terms of listening, listening and reading, automatically your previously partially known words will become solid. Let me give an example. Suppose you know a word, you are able to understand it when somebody has used it, either in writing or in reading when you come across that word. So you have that receptive knowledge, you can understand. But unless you know all the shades of that word, now, when I say all the shades or all the aspects of that word, I mean its pronunciation, its grammatical limitation, its collocation, word partnership. So knowing the word abject is not enough. You should know that the word abject is used with this, 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 this. Abject can be used with poverty, abject failure, right? So collocation is probably one of the things that can help you to convert your receptive vocabulary or move your word, receptive words into productive words. Yeah, this was the last one. Okay. Thank right. you. Okay. 
so that was an indeed very beneficial workshop. Thank you, Dharmendra Sheikh, sir, for your valuable My presentation. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice time. Advice will surely help us in word power. I would like to thank all of you for making this webinar success. I declare the webinar over. Thank you.